Hi there, it's John Pushkar. I'm coming to you today with another episode about natural gas, fuels, and fired equipment safety with some important information that could hopefully save someone's life. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. If you've seen many of my episodes, you may have come to expect that somewhere along the line, there's been a horrendous tragedy involved. And today's episode is no exception. Today, I wanna to take you into the world of codes, standards, and recommended practices. For those of you who might not be familiar, codes, standards, and recommended practices are actually three different types of documents that are used every day in the world of fuels and combustion equipment safety. These are the very basic rules that we all go by so that we know that we're doing the best job possible to make an installation or a facility as safe as anyone knows how to do. They get created or modified after some horrendous event has directed a knowledgeable and caring group of people to spend their volunteer time, efforts, and resources to try to prevent these things from ever happening again. Such was the case after the 2010 clean energy power plant explosion in Middletown, Connecticut. For those of you who are not familiar, this terrible tragedy took the lives of six employees at that site. I was an expert in the case for the plaintiff's attorney, Robert Reardon. The case eventually settled for over $34 million. Of course, nothing can replace the lives of those poor souls that were lost on that day. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board saw it fit to ask NFPA to come up with a document that would help prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. I was fortunate enough to be a founding member of NFPA 56, which is the standard for the prevention of fires and explosions during the cleaning and purging of flammable gas piping systems. This document today provides the basis for the safe cleaning and purging for natural gas piping systems operating at over 125 pounds pressure and for flammable gas piping systems operating at lower pressures. So if you want to be out there doing the very best job that you know how, keeping people safe, putting in very credible projects that include the latest best efforts of the most knowledgeable people in the field, then you need to understand things like the differences between a standard, a code, and a recommended practice. You need to know which of the hundreds of possible documents might apply to your project. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a chance to get your start. I'm going to provide you with a clip out of my Module 10 Codes and Standards Basics from the Online Prussian Technical Services School. This is just kind of an awareness level thing. I've spent 30 years studying codes and standards. I've been on many codes and standards committees, and I am today. I've submitted hundreds of modifications to codes and standards, and there are many parts of today's codes and standards which have come as a result of my efforts. Today is just gonna be a baby step for you. You'll at least understand what these documents are, where to find them. Interpreting them properly takes a long time. After many years of this, sometimes I still feel like I don't completely understand what's being said, and I've got a network of friends and colleagues to call upon. If you feel this way, it's very understandable. These are somewhat complex documents. They need to be rewrite a number of times, and sometimes you need to reach out for a hand. I can be that hand, happy to help. Sit back, relax, get ready to take good notes because you're gonna enter now the world of codes and standards basics. Welcome to module 10, where I hope to open your eyes to the world of codes, standards, and other recognized and generally acceptable engineering documents. There could be a week spent on this topic. I'm on a number of codes and standards committees and have been for over 30 years. 
I'm going to try to kind of lightly go over the, the highlights and give you some insights into what documents might apply to you and how to read them and interpret them properly. So we'll discuss code standards, recommended practices, who makes the documents, what's in them, how to read them, how they're enforced, and which of these documents might be the most relevant. And again, our focus is on boilers, fuel systems, and fired equipment. Codes, standards, recommended practices, certification, marks, approvals, these are all terms used in the industry to describe mostly expert opinions on how something's to be selected, installed, operated, maintained. You've heard me use the term code, standard, and recommended practice. There are actually three different styles and types of documents. A code is a standard that's suitable for adoption into law independently. NFPA 54 is the National Fuel Gas Code. NFPA 86 is the standard for ovens and furnaces. So listen carefully when people throw around these terms for documents because they mean different things. And they kind of go in the order I've shown in, in terms of their relative importance. Standards are next. It's a document that contains only mandatory provisions. It uses shall statements, not should statements. Many standards have a mandatory portion of them and a non-mandatory portion of them. I'll be referring a lot to NFPA, National Fire Protection Association documents. That's where I have the bulk of my experience. In their standards, there's mandatory text, then there are annexes or appendices, some people call them, and that contains non-mandatory explanatory types of items. Last but not least are recommended practices. These contain a collection of ideas and thoughts and opinions that are primarily should statements. So they're not requirements, they're guidelines, if you will. They carry kind of the least weight in the consensus document industry. Again, here's kind of the hierarchy. When you see codes, think law. When you see standards, think almost a law, might become one. When you see recommended practice, think oh, best available guidance. I wonder if there's also a standard for this particular area of technology that I have to know more about. I mentioned in the intro something called RAGAGEP. It's an acronym for Recognized and Generally Accepted Good Engineering Practices. If you're an OSHA Process Safety Management PSM facility, there's a document I'm providing you a link for, and I'll also provide a PDF of it. But it describes how you're supposed to be following something. You can decide what RAGAGEP you're going to follow, but even if it's a recommended practice or some internal company guideline, you need to be having something in writing that dictates how you're going to select, apply, operate, maintain equipment, train your staff so that you could have good, safe outcomes. OSHA PSM facilities have as one of their criteria having 10,000 pounds or more of a particular threshold chemical on site. If you don't know if you're an OSHA PSM facility, you need to find out. It could impact the documents that you need to be following as part of RAGAGEP at your facility for some of the fired equipment that you own, maintain, or operate. OSHA provides examples of RAGAGEP. They could be widely accepted codes, consensus documents, non-consensus documents, or even internal standards. Neither Prescient Technical Services, Inc. or John R. Pushkar, the presenter and author of this work, warrant or represent expressly or by implication the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use and misuse. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or coworkers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prescient Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created 
from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information. I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe and the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day.